<laughs> All right. And the meeting is live. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today uh, to talk about the Automation Loan Participation Program. Um, my name is Drew Lindorfer. I am the manager of the SSBCI unit at DEED. I'm here with my colleague John Endress, who's the program manager for the Automation Loan Participation Program. I will give you a brief overview of SSBCI programs in general, and then John can run through the, uh, the program specifics. We will do Q&A at the end, so if you have questions, feel free to post them in the Q&A on the screen there. Um, quick overview of SSBCI. Um, this is the State Small Business Credit Initiative. Uh, it's federal funds from the U.S. Department of Treasury that was uh, reauthorized as part of the American Rescue Plan Act last year. Minnesota expects to receive $97 million overall, which will go towards six programs that are approved for small business credit support and venture capital. Uh, in general, uh, the purpose of the program is to provide access to additional capital for qualified small businesses, and all of the SSBCI funding is uh, uh, financing versus grants, and it also has to result in additional private financing. So there are partners in um, all of the projects, uh, such as banks or CDFIs, or um, in the case of the venture capital programs, equity investors. This is the list of programs. Uh, this is the fifth of six programs to roll out. You'll see there the dollar breakdown from that $97 million. So there is $12.5 million overall that is going toward this automation program. Uh, the loan guarantee program is currently open for lender enrollment. And once we have lenders enrolled, we will be posting a list of those. Growth Loan Fund is targeted at startups, so if anyone on the call is working in the innovative technology space, you might want to look at that as well. And the Loan Participation Program will be launching a request for proposals for lenders very soon. The University of Minnesota is running our two venture capital programs, and additional information and a link to their website is available on our website. And with that, I will move over to John. Thanks, Drew. Uh, my name is John Endress, uh, as Drew said. I'm the uh, program administrator principal for the State Small Business Credit Initiative, which I'll be referring to and we have been referring to as SSBCI. Currently, this program is available. This slide uh, is pretty much a high level program overview. Uh, SSBCI are federal funds, and unlike some of the recent federal programs, mainly the PPP and EIDL, SSBCI funds are never a grant or a forgivable loan. The mandate of SSBCI is to create a cause and result for private financing. Uh, therefore, it can never be uh, standalone financing. So next slide, please. Um, this is a resource for Minnesota manufacturing, uh, distribution and warehousing businesses. Uh, interesting in making uh, investments in machinery, equipment, software it's similar to the minnesota investment fund uh, also known as MIF. Uh, but unlike MIF, it doesn't have job requ uh, creation requirements um, businesses interested in, um, in using this program could also access the automation training incentive program which is a worker training um, uh, funding i uh, believe is a grant for uh, uh, people who are training existing workers on the new technology, but that would occur after this loan and not before. So uh, next slide, please. Maximum loan is uh, $500,000. Um, it's gonna be a five to seven year uh, amortization. Really, it's gonna be based on the life of the asset. Uh, it's a 1% interest loan. Uh, the automation loan program requires a one-to-one -one term loan match. Uh, this means that deed is going to do one portion of the project and the private lender will do another. Again, that's because SSBCI needs to be a cause and result for private financing. Um, uh, and it's important to note that the uh, lending partner in this, their interest will be whatever the market rate is. 
and not the matching 1%. Um, and, you know, depending upon the project, um, Deed could do interest only payments for six to 12 months. Uh, what well, that would be, you know, for an installation period when the asset isn't producing the cash flow it needs, uh, or uh, for a period when the production, you know, is impacted by that upgrade. Next slide. Um, in your application, uh, be sure to explain the benefits of, of the automation that you want to do. And this is just a really simple list of kind of the basic things that you'd need to get a loan. Uh, each lender is going to have different requirements um, and they'll be creating a credit summary from those things. And the it should be expected that the lender will provide that credit summary to deed and the borrower should also um, understand and assume that uh, the other lender and deed will be corresponding about this and be OK with, you know, uh, being able to have their information shared with between the financing partners. Uh, next slide. The application process uh, is as follows. Uh, the business will apply. Uh, they will identify their uh, partner lender for this term loan match. Uh, on the application, you'll see on our website, the top half is going to be for the borrower and the bottom half is for the lender. Uh, if the project's a fit, um, Deed will communicate with that partner, then provide the conditional commitment letter. Basically for this loan, Deed and the other lender are mutually agreeing to commit funds to the project um, and it, the loans can, can close if the conditions stay the same. Uh, the applicant uh, who has already uh, self-funded the project or paid for any part of the project or a loan that already has closed for this project is not eligible for this loan because again, that's really goes with the cause and result. If the project's already been paid for, SSBCI cannot be a cause or result for that. Uh, next slide, please. So this information is mostly for the lenders interested in using this program uh, who would be doing that term loan match. Um, with SSBCI funds, we have to be really careful with SBA and uh, USDA guarantees. Uh, SBA requires a 10% down payment. This loan cannot be that gap. Uh, the SBA can also not be used to purchase the same things. Uh, with SSBCI funding, the US Treasury uh, has a but for for this financing. Basically, uh, that's a reason for these funds. Uh, to be in the project and uh, the project couldn't have happened without those. Some examples would be that the lender's policy requirement uh, 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 doesn't allow the unique uh, uh, asset that or loan to value issue or it's a unique kind of uh, a deal uh, requested uh, loan exceeds the lender's legal limit. Uh, basically, any real factors that relate to the credit uh, that cannot be overcome except for the assistance of SSBCI funds. Again, this is a one-to-one -one, uh, loan match, which is the expectation. However, a lender could do a three-to-one or five-to-one match, but the maximum loan that deed would do would still be $500,000. Uh, and it's important to mention too, that this can only be used to purchase equipment and not be used to lease it, and deed would require a personal guarantee. Next slide. This is where the application can be found. You basically go to our website. There will be a, a description of all the uh, of all the programs we have, and you click on that. If uh, we can keep that there for just a minute, uh, people can write that down. Okay, we can go to the next slide. John, I am going to post this in the Q and A because actually that website is um, not the final version of it. So uh, everyone, okay. I'll post that in the Q and A as well. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so these are US Treasury's funds, so we have to follow their guidelines. And with these funds, uh, um, there are some restrictions. Business cannot repay uh, delinquent taxes, use the portion uh, to buy, purchase an ownership interest or reimburse funds to an owner or investor to refinance any kind of debt. Uh, essentially, that's why if the project's already been funded, SSBCI funds cannot be used. It's that cause and result um, thing again. So. Next slide. Well, again, these are US Treasury funds, so we are following their guidelines. Uh, an attestation uh, is like a promise. 
the Treasury requires the borrower to promise use of funds, which is what I previously stated, uh, that there's no conflict of interest and that they're not a sex offender. Uh, a SETI certification is for someone who is classified as SETI, and that means socially and economically a disenfranchised individual. That could be geographic, demographic, or socioeconomic. That could be defined as a uh, minority or someone who lives in a rural area who has limited access to capital. Next slide, please. The Treasury also requires us to collect demographic information. There's no priority funding for this program or any of the SSBCI funds. If the individual chooses not to fill out the demographics form, uh, it doesn't impact the credit or underwriting decision. The data is mainly used for um, program, program uh, development purposes. Next slide. We appreciate your time today. And we'll go to the Q&A. We can leave um, leave that up there for a few minutes. We don't have a ton of questions. Um, I can go back up here. Uh, so just reading through these. Um, if there is question about whether we can pay off a private lender and deed loan in a shorter time frame, such as three years, and whether there is a penalty for prepayment. Uh, we are not controlling the terms of the lead lender, and so I can't speak to whether there would be a prepayment penalty for them, but there would not be for the deed loan. You can pay it off in full um, at any point in time when that's uh, the right business decision for you. Is there a listing of private lenders that participate in this program? Um, unlike the guarantee and the small business loan participation program, we are not dictating which uh, private lenders can be involved in this. Uh, our assumption is that a lot of manufacturing firms and other types of businesses that would qualify for the program are going to have banking relationships already um, or vendor relationships that are very specific to the pieces of equipment that are being purchased for the automation purpose. And so we would not um, want to dictate which lenders you can work with. Uh, that being said, the lender will need to be willing to cooperate with Deed um, just because there is that coordination piece. And we want to make sure that the underwriting um, and all of that and the, the equipment purchase is all being done um, appropriate to SSBCI standards. Uh, can the program be used for agricultural purposes, such as a robot for a dairy facility? Uh, if it falls under manufacturing uh, code, we're looking at NAICS codes for that uh, purpose to make a determination about industry. We do have on the website, which I put in the chat earlier, uh, an, under our FAQs, there is a definition of automation technology. Uh, and so that I, would be a good place to reference to determine whether the project that you're undertaking is useful uh, or is um, going to fall under the, the categories that we cover. Um, but again, if, if you're in that manufacturing uh, technology uh, warehousing or I can't remember what the other one is, John. <laughs> well, it means industrial uh, in general, the yeah. warehousing, distribution, that kind of thing like that too. Um, then you and it falls under automation, uh, we should likely be able to work with that. Um, there are a bunch more here. Give me just a minute to publish the rest of these questions. Thanks. And if some of these are very specific to a business, we can, um, they're better addressed by um, email. Yeah, that you can email that sspci.deed at state mn, that, that one that's on the screen right now for specific questions that are, you know, maybe have more detail that, that needs to be known. Uh, 
and also stuff about your industry too would be helpful um, and how that automation would enhance your productivity in the email communication. So. Back to the questions. Thanks for your patience. Okay. What type of equipment will qualify? Uh, for example, an automated CNC cutter and forklift to feed the cutter. Uh, that is, again, um, I'd reference you back to the automation definition that is on the program website. We are using the same definition that the um, ATIP program uses uh, as that is pretty well developed in a good companion piece to this. So if anyone's familiar with that program, um, you should be familiar with what, what would qualify under the automation. Um, are the funds only for purchase of equipment, et cetera? You can use it for the electrician and freight to get the equipment working. Uh, the funds are for the purchase of equipment. Uh, we are also allowing them to be used if there are specific software needs related to the operations. A loan be used to the company applicant to acquire company assets, equipment installed at customer locations to automate a need of that customer. Well, there there is a restriction with buying ownership interest in those other companies. Uh, I would put that in there as a, a thing with that. I think that's one of those ones where there's more detail needed than that question uh, where you might want to just email our us and uh, state, you know, more details in there. We can maybe answer that question better in there, I think. I think the answer is going to be no, um, but let's talk offline on that one. Uh, what is the estimated time frame from applying for the loan to getting your loan approved? We just opened this program and uh, we so we haven't completed any of these yet. And I I would say that in general, um, the expectation probably is around the same timeline for what Minnesota Investment Fund is, uh, which is typically in the three to six week area, depending on whether or not we get all of the information um we require at the front end of the application uh we do have a loan committee process that we need to go through this after uh doing the reviewing and coordinating with the bank or other lending partner yeah and i'd like to add too is that be mindful is that it's really there's two timelines is the the lending partner because this is a, a a matching loan our side and then their side so that those two factors would be considered not just how quickly it is for turnaround for us. We've begun automation of a manufacturing line this year and have additional capital needs next year. Would we be able to pay off the previous vendor financing to roll into the overall project? Um, SSBCI overall has very strict rules around when you can refinance, so it's unlikely it would depend on what terms the vendor financing is currently at. Most likely, we would need to limit this to whatever the additional needs are for the, the continuation of that expansion that you're looking at. Um, Joe, if you want to email us additional details, we can um, get into that with you as well. But that's um, important for everyone to know that it's very restrictive about refinancing in general. Um, purchase of equipment with the supply chain issues may take months or even a year. How long can we have these funds committed to a borrower? Uh, yeah, we are definitely well aware of how the supply chain affects it. That's actually one of the reasons that we built in that potential for a six to 12 month uh, deferment period, because we know it's taking a really long time for folks to get stuff right mm -hmm. now. Um, the key point on this is that we need to have approved it before you actually buy the equipment, um, mm -hmm. because otherwise we don't have that cause and result left um, it or the the but for that John talked about. Um, so I, um, unless something got very out of whack, wouldn't be too concerned about how long we could have the funds committed to the borrower. It's mostly the point in time at which you get the SSBCI approval. 
Um, how strict is the automation definition? I think, um, again, I'd refer you back to our website for that. If you have questions on very specific things, again, please email mm -hmm. us. Can the private lender complete the application on behalf of the borrower and transmit the information to the state agency? Um, there are places on our application for both parties to sign, so the business will have to fill in something. Our application is not particularly long um, and does rely pretty heavily on um, coordination with the lead lender. Um, so if you still have questions, uh, Mike, after you look at the app, um, feel free to email us. Thanks. Yeah, just one caveat is that the loan can't already be closed already or you know that's kind of very important like cause and result so if you already have the that um project already scoped out that would be great yeah and the other thing i just would also want to reiterate is that we can't be covering the gap on an sba or usda product um, which does include um, both 7a and 504 loans um I don't recall off the top of my head the name of the USDA one that Treasury specifically calls out, but they do specifically call out 7A and 504s. We have equipment we want to purchase now, but it will not use the full $500,000. Can we apply for the remainder later? Uh, we have not maybe had a discussion about that, but I believe that that is the cap for the program um, and so right. the individual loan would not go above five hundred thousand right and be mindful there's another component of this there's the private lender part and our part so it's not just five hundred thousand dollars whatever you'd get from the private lender if your project was five hundred thousand dollars it would be 250 and 250 in that so we don't really have enough information to to go with the real scenario but yeah that's important to know yeah and the um the other thing if any of you have worked with other deed programs in the past um like minnesota investment fund um you'll you'll know that we typically are looking at things as sort of on a project level basis so if there are multiple expansions that are done over the course of the year or multiple iterations of automation um that's occurring it, deed can look at those separately so if you needed to fill a two hundred thousand dollar gap now and in two years you're doing some additional and need another two hundred thousand dollar gap we can certainly come back to that as a separate project and loan um is the lender the ongoing loan servicer and what ongoing information is needed from the lender uh the intention is for the business to uh, make separate repayments to deed uh, depending on the lender's comfort level, we would likely coordinate some level of funds flow at the front end, but we are not making any requirements that the lender service the loan in an ongoing fashion. Um, the intention is for Deed to be the servicer of this companion loan. If the equipment has already been ordered and a deposit paid on the order, would that equipment purchase be eligible? In general, no, in particular, because we have not even had a chance to look at it and approve anything contingent upon or have any purchase contingent upon our approval. I also say technically, if you've already paid for it, I don't know if you've used any kind of debt or cash or whatever, but that's sort of refinancing under the classification of SSPCI. So that would be something uh, probably not allowed. Um, Chris, for the sawmill upgrade, I think we'd need more specifics on that. So if you can email us, that would be wonderful. If a company participates in both, both in nonprofit and manufacturing industry, can we apply? Um, that also seems pretty specific, although I guess I will say that SSBCI does not prohibit loans to nonprofit organizations um, in general. So uh, again, maybe email us with specifics. Mm -hmm. Corporation has many manufacturing companies underneath its umbrella. Can each one apply for the $500,000 or only one? Uh, we the, the equipment needs to be um, going to a location that is in Minnesota, so you would be limited by that. If it is an independent company that is going to be the borrower of record, we would be looking at the borrower of record. 
Um, so in some ways that may depend on how your lead lender is going to look at it. If they're financing through the parent company's line of credit or something similar to that, there may be some complications. Um, in general, though, we're going to be looking at who that borrower is. Mm -hmm. um, so if it's the subsidiary, I, I would think you would be fine. The deed loan is only for the company that cannot get full financing from their lender. That is correct. Um, the, the lead lender, again, all of SSBCI is intended to be filling gaps in the credit market. And so that is a limiting factor just for SSBCI funds overall. Uh, we will be posting the PowerPoint slides on our website um, as well as a recording of the webinar. Um, after this, that usually takes a couple of days. And multi phase upgrade, I think I already addressed that. Yeah. Purchasing automation equipment from a company with common ownership an issue. Possibly, yes. Um, I guess let's get into the specifics on that. Typical interest rate on a bank portion, that is actually a conversation to have with your banker because we are not um, dictating uh, what the terms of the lead lender are. Right, and I can add to that is you can look up Wall Street Journal prime rate and that you'll generally, as a benchmark, we'll see that most lenders will not be doing interest rates lower than that for the most part for lending. So you can use that as a benchmark. Our, we don't control their interest rate as, as Drew said, ours is 1%. Uh, okay, and then the last one here, uh, the instructions on the website say that the business can obtain all required financing through the lead lender. That is just um, talking about that gap financing need. Uh, so, Again, there has to be the gap financing need just based on um, SSBCI being intended to fill gaps in the market. Um, we can leave this open. That was the last question, unless Eric, did you see that I missed any on that list? I don't think so. You already addressed the yeah the bank portion interest rate and the you saw the question business cannot obtain all required financing that was the newest one i saw yep so mm -hmm. yep all that right, should well be it can, um, yeah again uh if you have um if you have questions that are project specific as i know some of you did uh the best way to get those addressed is to send mm -hmm. an email to ssbci.deed at state.mn.us um Additional detail, including those automation, uh, what the definitions for automation are, are located on DEED's website uh, under the FAQs. And the application is also available on that page. Um, which I can post one more time as well. <laughs> we really appreciate everybody's time today. Uh, and again, we look forward to working with some of you in the future. And if you, um, if either the businesses or the um, lead lenders have questions for us, we're always more than happy to start working with you earlier rather than later so that we don't miss that window of opportunity to assist with the project. It, I again recognize that the way that equipment uh, lead times is going these days is not easy for anybody. Mm -hmm. Um, that um, rather than miss than miss the opportunity to um, assist businesses in growing in Minnesota. So thank you all so much for your time, and uh, we'll be. Thank you.